So, man, it has been years. like like way too many Bro. weeks, guys. Way too, way too many weeks. There's some cool updates I wanted to give for the channel and huge shout outs. We ooh, we had I think we're at 100 views for our last oh. video. There's 100 people who actually looked at us. We have, a, we have so like a on stage echo going on. Oh, maybe it's me. Hold on. Probably, uh, yeah. Because I hear me too, I think. How about now? Test him. It's Test. good. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, good. it was me. It was me. Sorry. It was me. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I didn't hear an echo. Oh. Yeah, we're good. we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm a no, professional. I, I didn't. promise. Oh, man. I forgot to. I have a few shorts queued up for the Tap Haven podcast to release on Tap Haven podcast days, oh. but. Well, but everything is ruined. Things now. have been a little uh, crazy for me. Yeah, so, I, I guess we should start with your update and why mm -hmm. we haven't really had the podcast for the uh, at least a few weeks. Tell the people uh, why. Well, they have to know. Those I mean, of you that listen, maybe a few times here and there, might know that I live in North Carolina mountains. <laughs> and if you have been paying attention. This next piece of information. There aren't really mountains there. anymore. They're like gone. <laughs> the mountains are still there, <laughs> but there are, are literally they? like pictures of, uh, hey, see all these buildings in this town? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now it's a river. There, there's, there's not buildings in a town there anymore. It is a not river. Yeah. It's yeah. a not town. Yeah. Okay. So okay. we are still in the middle of a disaster, but we are very lucky in that, uh, we're we're in a section that wasn't nearly as bad as some others. We're right next to the sections that are really bad. Um, so like we just, we already got power and internet back after eleven days. Um, Praise be. But there's still like almost seven thousand people just in our little vicinity. So seven like seven thousand out of forty five thousand people. Jeez. Wow. Still don't have power. There's like almost 400 outages, so like they keep on fixing the big stuff, but then like there's little ones Small that are gonna take stuff forever. Keeps picking, yeah, there's yeah, even yeah, there's even yeah. stuff where they just they can't get there. There's no road anymore. Like roads, yeah. entire That's... roads are gone. Not just <laughs> yeah. not just like when when we leave our home, there are patches where the road got erased like someone took a eraser and erased part of the road yeah. i was like i don't like that part yeah and then they they're like <laughs> okay right. well we're just gonna dump a bunch of rocks here and and it's gonna be a pseudo road again um a pseudo road there are roads that cannot road. be roads anymore there are roads that literally are now just river like if you imagine the grand canyon getting formed and you had like a road going along the river that used to be where the grand canyon is yeah well no there's just a grand canyon now <laughs> like, mm -mm. there's nothing you can do so one of the craziest things was like there was one that i've seen where i i visited a part of north carolina and there's like a bridge really high up and you like look down on all the stuff that you like just walk through or whatnot and it's like high it's like very high <laughs> and now it is oh, like one of those yeah. pond bridges where you could feed fish off the edge like Wait. it is the, Eric, the water like goes up you remember that bridge that we walked across i think we're talking about i'm, I'm talking about oh, that th that very but tall bridge was, that goes over the river yes from i was like just very avoiding high. any doxing issues by yeah yeah yeah, it, it, yeah it's just gone that yeah yeah, yeah. The that bridge whole is area. gone, or like just like that area of like the the low water is just it's no, like all... the water reached where your feet would be yes. on the bridge oh and God. took it out. And this is one of those bridges that it's so high you don't you're like I don't want to be up here potentially. Yeah, like, it's a it's terrifying. like it's a gallery bridge. It was only it wasn't built practically. It was built as a scenic bridge for that area. Yeah. And you're like, what do the you water mean? got that what high. Do what do you mean do you there's mean? water? It, it's like a hundred feet. It's like wild. fifty somewhere yeah. between fifty and hundred feet. I know I could be way off, but like it is an yeah. insane amount. And that is right next to town. Yeah. And then and, you had so many yeah. dams that just like couldn't do what they were supposed to. Entire flood base just gone. Like it's crazy. The uh, weird thing was um when we moved here and even before because we were visiting family that lives here 
uh, we would drive around and at one point I'm looking and I'm like, you see a rock and you're like, that rock is really out of place on this flat area. And I watched some like podcasts where there's, I think it's not, what's this guy's name? Randall Carlson. Randall. Some people don't like him, but okay. he's, he, cause of his like number stuff, but he knows a lot about geology and he shows you how like giant flood paths have carved through certain parts of the world mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. nation and, and you can just see evidence of like gigantic receding lines of water just like you see the small versions on a on, on the sand of a beach you're like you can see that across like these lo vast lands and they're huge and so i think watching that made me have like some understanding of what rivers do or floods do to areas and I, i'm like we're driving along like a year ago and i'm like this looks like a flood happened here <laughs> and then i asked my father-in-law about that i was like i was i told him that while we're eating dinner one day and he's like well yeah there is like a hundred year flood here it like happens like every hundred years there's a flood uh and so it was like kind of weird because we like knew that that was a thing um but this was a thousand year flood yeah not a hundred years it, this, was is, this was this like was a, a thousand freak. year this yeah, it was like 40 trillion feature. tons of water. Yeah. And some are saying it's uh, related to the earth getting warmer because every degree of centigrade you go up, you give the atmosphere 7% more water it can hold. Mm. And 7% oh. is huge when you're talking huge. about 40 trillion yeah. tons. And then you also consider that, like when I was reading into it, that North Carolina as like a state and every state kind of does this. North Carolina designed most of their infrastructure over the past hundred years based on records that they have of rainfall. And so they're building it with this hundred year flood and like the data yeah. that they have. The f what you're about to say is that the floor is nowhere close to where the actual ceiling now is <laughs> yes. yeah 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 so on top of all of this natural oh flooding God. you had you had a bunch of exacerbated issues because of damming that we've done over the past hundred years where oh this dam just didn't work for this case and it causes 40 to 50 feet of extra flooding in a certain area down that dam you know down river that dam and it's like Okay. They said no. They said no. No, it's it's crazy. It was a crazy yeah. event. We, yeah, and we're people, glad you made it in one piece. Yeah, yeah. I think the worst part was for uh, like my mom had no idea. Oh, oh the last thing I texted my mom. So we were oh, up no. that morning. The power goes out around like five a.m. maybe, but we have a UPS on the internet. Yeah. So the internet is still fine. So we can still text people. Uh, and my mom wakes up, she asks how it's going. I was worried about them because it looked like they were going to get hit, hit the worst down in Georgia. Um, they were fine. And then <laughs> I told her we're okay. This is my last text. We're okay. But the worst of it is hitting right now. Oh no. That was the last thing You're that terrible. you sent your mom. This is what, I was not on purpose. I was, <laughs> you were the worst. Mm, totally like that's fault. the worst text you could ever send. It's totally your fault. And I look, look, because I didn't know I had to help clean all of your mess up that <laughs> whole for the next like few days. Yeah, now your I'm mom's fooled. calling me worried, and then I'm worried, and I'm like, this motherfucker right here needs to like get on a phone. So one of the things was so like I saw so we were on the deck was a screened in deck. We weren't just outside when this was mm. happening. But uh, we were out on the deck, and I saw, like, the strongest wind I've ever seen in person. And, oh, like, wow. trees cracked and fell when it came through. Uh, my wife is from Florida. She wasn't phased whatsoever. Cause she's yeah. seen... Wow. Yeah. What the fuck? I mean, she's... when you see, like, 140-mile-per-hour I mean, winds every single year, it's yeah. like... <laughs> she was like, that wasn't that big of a deal. And I'm like... I'm telling you, that was a big deal for here. <laughs> like, come on, that's it's a big not, deal for there. that doesn't happen yeah. here. Um, and so, but the, the the weird thing was, like, a lot of trees fell. It, it was very wet and rainy. Power was out. But in our little 
street, it wasn't too bad right here. It so much so that the next day our neighbor was supposed to go to town. I don't know which town, but she was supposed to go to town with her friend and see a show. So she got in her car to go and do that. Cause she also had no idea. She was like, I turned Chick. around. I could not. I was, she was like, how did you even get out the driveway? Well, <laughs> that's so how I feel about all of this. The man. crazy <laughs> thing is, so people are like really shocked at how quickly a lot of things are recovering here. Like, um, Maybe a week ago, I heard that this one town was a week ahead of schedule in one regard and three weeks ahead of schedule in another for like the disaster recovery wow. stuff. Well, the thing is, like, it's snowstorms here all the time and mm -hmm. roads get shut down all the time. And the people that live here, well, storm's over. I'm going to go somewhere or I'm going to go and make sure my friend's OK. They put a chainsaw on the back of their truck or they put their snowplow on their truck. Uh, not for this case. And they go out and they fix the road. And so like, and that's it. you know, it's fine. I mean, it's fine. and people were doing that to like, they were bringing up big equipment, you know, like skid loaders and backhoes and stuff like that. And at one point in time, FEMA shows up and tells these guys to stop what they're doing because they need to assess all the damages before it is worked on. And they almost got shot because the guys there were like, we're going to go and make sure they're alive. So you need to leave because we're not just going to stop and hope that they're alive. They could be buried under their house right now. We're clearing a way to their house. And so like one lane got cleared very quickly where there was still roads. <laughs> this is crazy people. That's crazy people talk. No. Nope. <laughs> it's not crazy they're saving each other they're, they're no no they're looking I out understand. for each other i understand like it's like a system that it works because there's already a system in place it's just to me i'm just like mm. the crazy the crazy thing is that i think the fema disaster recovery like uh you know their playbook is used to things happening in places like florida and a big city mm -hmm. that's near the coast in places that are like we can see everything right now, you know, like this is bad, but we can see what's going on here. It's like, no, no, no. These people are literally stranded and you don't know how they are unless you get a helicopter to them. And there's only so many helicopters. So I was about to say when you also have like, there are multiple cities along I-40 that were just cut off because of I-40 damage, because that's like their main yeah. interstate in and out. And so they, they they like in a lot of cases, you had like local pockets where they were like just stuck in that local pocket too. Yeah. Where they were like, I can't get past no I, I can't do I can't no. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And the unfortunate thing is that I smaller roads for better or for worse, can have like patches and these types of things done really quickly. But when you have large interstates that are essentially these giant multi-month projects yeah. of getting these roads set up, if it's destroyed all the way through in one section and you have to rebuild some of that foundation, it's just a lot of work. Yeah. Oh yeah, like a week in, we were able to visit my father-in-law because he got power really early. And so we went to him to do our laundry um, oh, nice. and he was telling us that one of the main bridges on the main road, uh, I think it was like I, maybe 19 or 26 or something like that. Uh, it's sinking and can collapse at yeah. any moment. So they are carefully yep. allowing like one car to go through it at a time and they're shoving stuff under it to try to stop it from collapsing. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> and I don't know uh, if it collapsed or not. Because uh, so I've been listening to like the news, but I've been listening to my news. like Your area's news. Yeah. yeah right down the street news. Yeah, that's so. crazy. It is wild, but uh, yeah. You lived through natural disasters. Congratulations. Yeah, really. We were really lucky. Um, a yeah. lot of people around us were not. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Very, very lucky, especially uh, Eric has seen it. You haven't seen it. We have a lot of trees like right next to the house. And none of them fall over or somehow they did. None of them fell on your house. Somehow right. none of them did. 
my dad built a lake house or yeah one fell that way but yeah up in south southern north carolina mm-hmm. northern south carolina like that area and they have a tree that is like massive like at like you could walk like, around it. yes you can't bear hug this there's not yeah. a human on the planet that could bear hug this tree and get his yeah. hands all the way around yeah. like it is huge uh it was during this storm it was ripped out of the ground took five other trees with it on the way to the ground and landed right next to his house <laughs> if it had been three degrees to the left Would my dad my dad texted me a picture he was like three degrees i wouldn't be here <laughs> i was like you gotta stop this is nonsense we're here you're dead man. like three degrees that's all it takes <laughs> yeah that's all I'm it like, takes this is wild Love but yeah this this tree Call literally just like that was a took everything it shook like the whole house like crazy. damn that was another thing that we didn't realize so on the second day saturday night um you know we have no idea how bad it really is we're just trying to play like some harry potter board game and have a drink and yeah. just buy candlelight harry potter you know yeah just and a uh time. and there's a knock at the door i'm like what the heck? And I go to open the door and I'm like, is this like a cop or something? I can't tell who this is. It's so dark because we have no lights. Yeah. It's Ashley's dad. <laughs> and uh, so he got to us as quickly as he could, which took like 36 okay. hours That's for him to get to us. What? We're like 25 minutes away from each other. It took him oh, okay. 36 hours to work his way to us through everything. Uh, well, we didn't realize until we talked to him that uh, he very much understood that the trees around our house, if they had fallen, would have fallen all the way to the basement. And we could have been sleeping because we have slept in, of course, as people do. So we could have gotten landed on. Yeah. So, no, it was she, it was very but she it, like didn't. that's what I had yeah. to keep telling. Like, that's what I told your sisters, you know, when I was talking, I was like, look. My guy's gonna be fine. If, if, like, <laughs> if a freak okay. accident didn't fine. occur, they're gonna be chilling, drinking whiskey, and playing some well, some board game. And, and really, this is a reason that like everybody should have a dog, in my opinion. Because so we we like to sleep in. You don't sleep in if your dog is awake and your yeah. dog is worried. And so the I forgot about this. The cutest thing happened before everything went down because the power went out. Our little girl Yui jumped up on the bed and worked her way around Ashley's head over the pillows over into my area and like over my head. She's never done this before. And so she's being, she's scared. She's trying to cuddle. She's being sweet, but like she's being an alarm. She's like, she's like, y'all need to get out. Y'all got to Yeah. We got to, we got to be paying attention right now. (laughs) She's like, there's a, there's a problem coming to me. Yeah. So that's like, they're they're the best they're the best alarm you know they're better than a smoke detector they're better than a what you call it alarm system in general for intruders and they're okay. like a natural disaster detector because they just they smell it or they I don't know they know something yeah yeah what are we drinking guys I'm drinking yeah. this currently <laughs> oh the bench currently I think That's we what we're have... drinking. Because this boy Dang. has been through a, a bit, so I think he needs to drink something. Oh, As yeah. We are only uh, six You know, maybe away. we want to decide soon if we're getting the next one <laughs> <laughs> before they go on sale and immediately sell out, as their marketing says happens. Oh, yeah. Which Fair. might be true. I don't know. We've never been on the other side of that, so we don't know for sure. But so we are question... looking into number nineteen. Nineteen. Well, your did your your dad bought it, right, Nat? Yes. Did he, he pre order? Well, no, he didn't. He didn't buy it. Remember? He didn't. Uh, I thought that. <laughs> as we're pouring this, I'll tell you a story. Okay. Uh, so, I had thought that whenever I got the delivery and we were in. Um, I think we were in Japan. Japan? We were somewhere. Mm, that smells nice. 
Um, and I remember having somebody watching the house and collecting all the packages, but he didn't say that he found anything from Flaviar. So I let Flaviar know, hey, it never came in. So they sent me another one. Oh, man. Oh, no. Here we go. My neighbor came over. It was like, oh, one other thing. Here's that other box you were talking about. So I gave the other one to my dad for him to try out. And so I don't know if he, I I told him to go ahead and try and keep up with the podcast. So I don't know if he did it, but. (laughs) Or if he already finished it. (laughs) Or if he already finished it, but it was my little gift to him. I was like, here you go. Nice. Ooh. Okay. Okay. What are what are we what are we looking at here? This is like an old faithful kind of kind of old faith vibe. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it hits. It hits. It hits. Kind of smooth, sweet. It smells. It's got like a citrusy note to it. It's a whiskey. It looks so red on Eric's camera. It is very very red. Is it? Yeah, it doesn't got, look red on mine. Mine neither. Well, yeah, it does. Yeah, it's like a reddish hue for sure. I think it's just as white balance. Oh, that, well, I also I also have only warm light. Wait a right second now. now. Oh, th- th- there. Can we look at the book? Is this allowed? Oh, are we gaming this? We, I mean, are we going back in hard? Or are we just going to chill for today? I feel like we. We're going to ease like ourselves back in. I could go ahead nice and... and admit defeat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sniffing this I thing. I feel like we should. I feel like we should come. We should get into this nice and slow. Okay. So we're. I haven't read anything yet. Okay. But I think we so should. So today, we're looking at the Journeyman Featherbone Cask Strength Bourbon Whiskey. This is nice. It and smells nice. Cask it, strength at fifty percent. That's what? what I was about to say. They're tripping on the cask strength. Did they brew, <laughs> did they brew it? Did they put it in there for like a month? Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's cask strength, you say. It says bourbon whiskey. It is a bourbon. I I didn't know cask strength could be less than 60%. <laughs> it has to you know have what? just been in there for a very short amount of time. I get a little bit of like a fruity tobacco almost. Yeah, I could see that. They got a weird drawing of corn on this. Okay. Oh, okay. I guess we're looking at the book. That's also a weird so looking banana. If that's a banana. Does it say tobacco in the book? Tobacco? It does. Nope. Oh, I thought you said we were looking at the book. Oh, oh it, it does, does say, say tobacco. tobacco. I, I mm. hadn't looked at the flavors yet. I could see that, though. The subtle sweetness they're putting down is like caramel. It's got this fruity note to it, this citrus, uh, almost cherry fruit very note juicy. type of deal. And then it has a little bit of that tobacco. I think that's that's really. It's, it's very bad. interesting on the, on the nose. I say we we oh, just yeah. get into this one. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Cheers it smells to great. surviving the hurricane and good health. Yes, and Absolutely. to everyone else. Yes. Okay. Mm. Mm. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. I cannot say my thoughts on this yet. Y'all go first. (laughs) I guess I'll go. I don't know, man. Um, You gotta, you gotta have a second sip. This before you, you know, that was the. That's fair. That was the primer. Um. Let's just talk about how um. Eric's got a new medal in the background. Oh, do I? Oh, I don't know. I, I, actually, maybe I, I just didn't I notice. I think I haven't. I think these are these are my these U.S. Are oh, I'm on the wrong side over here. This side. I think these are two U.S. Open medals, mm-hmm. silvers. I got second place in both my for divisions th- for throwing people. Yeah, for throwing people. I'm getting ready for Worlds, man. Only here goes. Only three more weeks, I think. Four more weeks. Hmm. Definitely better on the second go. So. I'll go. Yeah. I got you, Eric. Go. Shoot. I like this. Okay. I like it. Okay. I don't. So. I don't know what the vibe is right now, to be honest. (laughs) Eric, are you okay? (laughs) 
<laughs> he's getting out some Frey Ranch. He's, he's trying to wash it down. Like, what's happening? You don't. Okay, so let me not read too much into Eric's actions. I kind of like this, like the the sweetness of it off the top. Um, it it does kind of like meander in the middle uh, experience, and then like at the end, it does kind of subdue its way into some caramel and also some like uh peppery notes uh that being said yeah it's i feel like it's pretty good i don't know if i haven't drank a good whiskey in a while like y'all's reactions throw me all the way the fuck off (laughs) so i will um i'm not gonna rate it but i i like this so far Hmm. i'll explain my journey so right right when it hits the tongue, tongue, you get this like pepper. I get a ton of uh, like cloyingly sweet cherry. And then I get this little bit of tobacco. Mm. And then as it goes down, it kind of turns into this bright, almost like fizzy, spicy, citrusy type of deal as it kind of like goes away and then it fades into this long lasting note of like leathery orange rind bitterness type of deal hmm for me hmm yeah however it has the problem in my opinion of any alcoholic beverage that pushes too far into the cherry note for me. Really? Hold and on. that is I think you could get a label maker pour this into a uh, a plastic bottle with one of those push down caps and you could probably print out a label that says Robitussin and people wouldn't know the difference. Oh, damn. Why would you do that? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, now that you said it. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh, God. Right? Like, oh, this, I need to get water. I'll be right back. <laughs> no. Oh my god, he's dead. Like, like it, it tastes like Robitussin. I actually don't know what that tastes like. Good. Good. <laughs> You're living a life. What is that for? It's cough syrup. Oh, you know, um, when I was little, I hated uh you know that sort of thing so much any sort of cold medicine the flavor was so bad that uh (laughs) i didn't get sick until i was like 15 (laughs) there was one time i got sick and it took my whole family being sick on halloween and i was taking care of all four of them and then finally i succumbed but i never took medicine i just could not i was just like no i'll just I'll just heal. I'm good. Even I've even taken like Dayquil pills and been like grossed out. I don't. So I will say there are a lot of medicines that give you, give me a feeling where I'm like, I'm okay. Not, not but yeah, Robitussin is one of my least favorite ever. I just love, um, what I learned from doing the Wim Hof thing. What is that? Like, whenever I'm getting sick, or if I even have like a burn or something random, like uh maybe like a some athlete's foot or whatever. Yeah. Uh, there's just the science of over oxygenating your blood through that breathing method that oh, yeah, yeah. um creates like a different like an alkaline or whatever uh ph level in your blood and that kills like the viruses or or the fungus or whatever like very quickly uh and then you just like recover super fast compared to if you didn't do that sort of thing yeah 
and it's just like it's interesting it's cool but yeah this one uh luckily i don't know what robitussin tastes like but it it tastes nah. kind of meh <laughs> tell me i'm wrong you're not wrong tell me and that's I'm... why it's and that's why it's despicable I know. I that's Nat. This is why I said I did not want to say my review first. Let me just shoot this now because now it's medicine. Hey, I'm gonna be real oh honest. God. It doesn't. It, it's ugh, now the smell's gone too. <laughs> it's rough. Like the minute I tasted that cherry note, it is all that I could think about. It was ingrained, guys. Look, this. Do not it, like whiskey makers. Do not do cherry as a flavor profile unless you do it right. This is not right. This is not right. I'll go on record. Starting out, I don't. I don't need to ask ratings. Y'all know this is gonna be my first one. I don't think I'm finishing this glass, which is why I poured the free <laughs> ranch. Man. See, I think uh, I think y'all need some training. Ooh, shit. Okay, y'all, just... y'all need to develop my tolerance, and and I know how I developed it, so I have the secret for you guys. So y'all are gonna come over, and we're gonna like uh, do, do, what is it called? The time chamber, the uh, oh, the, the time... hyperbolic time chamber. We're gonna hyperbolic time chamber some training for you guys. What we'll do is uh. We'll play worms, and every time one of your worms dies, you have to take a shot of um, Everclear. <laughs> and when you drink it, you have to drink it and taste it and swallow it, dare I say, like a man. <laughs> How about, or like no. a teenage boy. I don't... I don't <laughs> and then I don't, maybe you not. can't have a chaser. I and if you do that, you will overcome all of your weaknesses. Oh my God. <laughs> How about no, Scott? <laughs> How about no? Hmm? But, then you may hmm? just never enjoy no, no. life to I'm its not fullest. Enjoy anything. I'm not going to enjoy yeah. anything. Okay. Uh, you disgusting creature. So I'll go first. Uh, <sighs> this... For me, bro, is the worst one we've me. done on the podcast so far. It is a it is a one for me. This is definitely not the worst. I for me, it's not I, good. But it, there's it, been there's there is like the Star Word. That that first Star Word wasn't as bad as this, in my opinion. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe y'all are just stuck with the that taste. Because, like, I know there's bad taste in it, but there's also good taste in it. Mm. That's fair. That's fair. There, There is... Let me... Let me Anthony, roll did it you back. Get st- Anthony, did you get sick a lot as a kid? He talked about oh, that. Oh, so I talked about this away. while you were yeah. gone. I hated those flavors so much that I didn't get mm-hmm. sick until I was, like, 15. I refused to get sick because I did not want to take medicine. I took medicine when I was really little could not stand it whatsoever it is the worst thing in the world so for for me yes ash it was worse than this the the swamp whiskey no it's not this, swamp it, that whiskey. one smelled literally like swamp ass and this doesn't smell like terrible anthony for me the personal preference maybe it's the robotus and talking it I, probably I, is i'm on with you with that like that is fair but for me, I'll drink the other one before I drink this one. I think I rated that one a two, right? A two is I can get through the bottle. I can drink it, but I'm not I, I, I'm not going to go out and get it. I don't like it, but I can finish it. I don't like it. I'll be legit. I do not think I could physically get down this whole Glencairn of this whiskey. Okay, so next time we play Not Enough Mana, this is your bottle. Oh my gosh! I, <laughs> I'm tapping, I'm tapping, bro. Like I ain't. I can, I will not. You're winning. I and will not. I'm okay with that. No, no. I'm I just saying not. we found your drink for that game. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> sheesh. 
I'm so over it. Oh man. I yeah. So Eric one, how dare you? I know. I'm this. sorry. I'm sorry. How Nat was so excited. This? Nat Bro. literally took the first sip and was like, I kind of like it, guys. <laughs> I hated it so much I broke my water bottle. Oh, oh my god. No. Like now I can't twist it and the nozzle won't come up. I I think I fucked it up. Which is unfortunate. Yeah, it's it's but I should know better. I shouldn't twi- I shouldn't just force things when I'm feeling wrong. So So what would you rate it, Nat, now with your newfound knowledge, your wisdom? Negative seven. <laughs> I wouldn't even rate it. Oh my I wouldn't God. even rate it. I don't even want to do the podcast anymore. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just upset. Oh no. And I don't know how to get over myself. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know how to fix this. <laughs> Yeah, um, ever since you basically pointed out the cherry flavor, uh, yeah, it just destroyed it for me. Destroyed it. I thought it was going to be citrusy. It is. But no, it's like, oh, God damn it. Yeah. It's just, I, I have no, I have no eloquent words to give you for this entire situation. It's just all bad and no good. Uh. So. Okay. I don't know what Anthony is doing in terms it of is, like Anthony, it is up to you to kinda to kinda give perspective on yeah, this whiskey for the people that probably aren't as war torn and PTSD as Nat and I are. So if you haven't watched this podcast, you might have a chance of liking this whiskey. <laughs> if you get to this point, you're screwed. If you've had Robitussin, probably. Um, I think that if you don't dislike that bitter flavor in there that I don't like, um, this is probably about a five on average for, for people. Like there's a lot of different flavors in there. There's some good smells. Um, but the primary bitter weirdness in the middle that might be what y'all are describing as Robitussin I don't like it, um, but because I am not scarred for life like y'all are, <laughs> I can still taste those other flavors. And I'm like, mm. like right now, there's a there's a good taste in there that I am tasting, and it's good. I like it. Um, but for me, it's this is a two. Like this is it's a two. No, I, okay. I don't. I don't want to. So have you're. This again. So you're. Yeah. Like, I, I understand that it's a five, I think. I think it's probably objectively a five, but it's a two for me. Garbage! But I can I can actually finish it. Like, it's not like, it's like there's just that, there's just that, that flavor that prevents you from drinking it too fast, <laughs> which is good. I cannot believe yeah. that I was conned into this. Oh, no. I'm so, I. So do you want to get another Flaviar advent calendar? Mm. <laughs> the timing Anthony's timing is like the anti-comedy timing it's just so it's so poignant to be fair I feel like we at least might have to it is, it is a good thing for it's us a, it's a good deal and it solves a lot of the logistics yes. issues of, 100%. hey do y'all have this at your local store can you get this oh, can you order yeah. this and it's way cheaper than if we were like buying bottles a hundred percent so i think uh essentially we'll kind of kind of should so i'll order it after the podcast we can save money if we buy two or more why are you like this <laughs> and then you'll just have to, then we just have to visit well, actually, you'd have to make sure you could take it on a plane. Oh, you're yeah. right. You're you right. Can. You're right. You're right. We you're have right, to do. Right, by the right. way, we have to do a a live episode on New Year's, right? We oh, do. Yeah. We so, do. Live episode, New Year's. Put in the calendar. Marking it off on the books right now. We're telling the people so we can't back out of this shit. That we're gonna do it. 
So oh, live is an in play. person. We're already live. Yes, in yes. person. Yes. <laughs> In person, in person, we will be live all together. I'm like imagining, trying. like, where are we gonna do this? Like, are we gonna get an amphitheater? Like, we all have to also when, bring. When people finally are willing to buy tickets to us, we will do a live show every year. <laughs> and everyone will get to drink with us. Yeah, drink. I'm, I'm, I'm drink. in for that. I'm, bring some vendors. I don't know the Local legalities vendors. of this. It we'll have to figure out. <clears throat> we'll do... probably have to do it in a state where we can get a distributor license. No, dude. No, dude. I think it's easier than that. I think um, so there's this restaurant that did not get washed away. Still there. Uh, <laughs> that Eric has been to. It's a very good restaurant in town. Uh, they do wine tastings. Well, the people that sell the wine are the ones that come over and give the wine away for free. They already have the licensing and they're allowed to come and provide that. Okay, so we just have to get a whiskey that yes. we want to try with everybody. That yes. We and go. they have to be allowed to do it. Got you. Yeah. I'm, dude, I, I think that be could be cool. Super dope. Dude, I wonder if there's I... any distilleries that are set up for that. Yeah. But you either way, I mean? live show. New Year's. We'll be trying a whiskey. Be ready for it. <laughs> be ready. But um, guys, do y'all want to talk about games? Because because you just reminded me of something. Yeah, let's. Are we ready yeah. for that? Or we know we need to do like the well, the price. I wish to wash myself of this. The price. That I've had. Uh, you're gonna have to pay me money to down that right there. I will not buy that. I won't buy it, but I think it should be on the. It's probably on the shelf for thirty-seven dollars. Is my guess. If we get a thousand subscribers, wow! I will. This, this is benchmark taste. It smells amazing. A full <laughs> glass of this. If you get X, say that again. A thousand subs, he'll drink a whole glass. A thousand subs. I'll drink a whole glass. Is there a time limit on that? Or are you just saying once we get a thousand subs, you're going to drink a whole glass and you're uh, happy no about it? Limit. If we get a thousand subs, I'm in. I'll drink a whole glass of this. I shall clip that for the record. Go ahead and clip it because I'm I'm just... Uh, I'm not happy marked. about this. Marked. So Ready. Okay. So what's what? What's the gaming breakdown, so, Anthony? As I've said many a time, we got to try this rum someday, and I really think we got to play a, a, a pirate game to do so. And now, the new season coming out on Thursday for Sea of Thieves introduces sneaking to the game. You can now crouch, and when you're sneaking to crouch around, your nameplate is hidden. You can be a barrel or be a treasure, but like you can be hidden in a treasure chest. And you can like sneak around on that and stuff like that. So you can act like your treasure. They there's traps. A stealth mechanic to yeah. the game is what you're saying. Yeah, there's traps. Okay. You can set booby traps now that can, you know, trigger an explosive. They could trigger a firework to let you know, oh, someone's there. They could trigger like a grog ball to make the guy drunk for now or a dancing ball to make them drunk or dancing for a bit. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of different things you can do with those. There's blow darts. Which of course are silent, and you, they can poison. They, they can do explosives. Sleep? They can put you to sleep. They can do okay, okay. so many different things. There's a h grappling gun. So there's a gun where when you shoot it, uh, you can traverse like the islands and stuff really easily. Uh, you could pull treasure to you. If it comes to a boat, though, um, you have to shoot the ladder. They didn't want it to be too easy for you to get, get on, on someone's boat. In like pub stomp um but i think if it's a galleon there's extra places that you can get on at because galleons are already strong so they have an extra weakness that other boats do not so oh and a big one uh for is that you have a you have an armory on your ship right well only you can now use your armory only you and your crew so if some guy uses a grappling gun to get on your ship and then they 
are like a TDMer. They're they're crazy at this game. They in the right now could go to your armory and switch that grappling gun that doesn't do damage for like the sniper that does a ton of damage and then they can kill you real quickly and easily they're not going to be able to do that anymore you are committed to your loadout uh when you go and board someone else's ship so that's going to be pretty that is a neat. nice change honestly because i i felt okay. like back in the day that was one of the things that would always be a little bit weird however does that also include reloading I don't believe so. Um, and I think that would be weird if it didn't. Because, like, oh, there's a bunch of ammo in this box. Yeah, you can grab it. But armory, like, no, my stuff is in the armory. Why, your stuff isn't in my armory. You don't go, you, like, it's weird. I think the game would become... Oh, better if you couldn't reload? Interesting. I don't know about better, because that is a huge... The problem is then everyone would have to use the sword. Yeah. Because it, once you're out of ammo, you're done. You can't yeah, fight Yeah, it anymore. would make the sword a requirement, I agree. Unless they added a really good idea, which is... Unless they had repairs. people with your... If you, if you, like, as you use your sword, it breaks oh. down. Oh, yeah, that oh. would be cool. <laughs> oh, you reminded me, though, that um, a big problem forever has been that you're going to be sneaky. You want to sneak on someone's ship. But guess what? A mermaid just popped up right in front of them, and they see your mermaid. And now you can't be sneaky. Well, now there is a way for you to dismiss the mermaid temporarily, or like a it's like a cooldown. Okay. So you can like sneak onto someone's ship, and once you're on the ship, the mermaid's not gonna pop up. Mermaids only pop up if you're like stranded on an island without your ship, or you're swimming in the water without your ship nearby. So you can't. Okay. Yeah. And so these are just the new changes coming this season. There's so many changes that have happened already that like would blow your mind, especially Nat, because you you haven't been on that game in so long. What? No hate. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't hate the I'm game. I'm saying it's a different game. I mean, I do. Also, like, also, <laughs> I, I must say this. I mean, I don't think you guys are. I think y'all are probably on my on my side with this. When I play that game, I don't want to do any of the work. I only want to steal. I, I don't want to go and do all the PVE stuff. I want someone else to do the work. And I'm going to take it. That's what adds fun to the game. I think for me, I like that aspect of it a little bit. However, I would rather, if I were designing Sea of Thieves, for me, the perfect game of that style, I would want more interactive combat which leads to more interesting pve only because it would make the engagement with the game more enjoyable overall and i for me i think all that like i am i'm interested in all aspects of the game like i want a little bit of the pvp i want a little bit of the pve I want those all to be really fun to do. And the thing that makes Sea of Thieves special, the thing that I think highlights are the moments of interaction with other characters while social... engaging yeah. with the mechanics that the game sets forward. So it's like, a social game, so it makes while sense. While yeah. doing PvE and then people come to steal your treasure, that's fun. While doing your own thing, you see some event, you go over there and see that somebody's collecting treasure and you're like, oh, now I, I'm going to try to steal this. My whole day has changed. But I don't want that to be my goal either. Like, I don't want to log on and be like, I'm going to go just hunt for treasure and steal from somebody. So like, I think I agree with you in that um, they already improved this not too long ago. It used to be so terrible, the amount of treasure that you would have to carry out of a vault or wherever that you just finished the PVE, and now it takes a while to put it on your ship. It used to be really, really bad. They added the harpoon gun, so you can just zap things onto your ship. It's incredible. It's great. That improved it a lot, but you still need to move the loot to a spot where you can harpoon it, right? Then they went and reduced how much loot you get, but increased the value for everything. So another good step, but still like 
it's too a many few steps. too many things. <laughs> Too and that's steps. the part that makes me not want to do the work. I actually will. I love the PVE in the water because all the loot rises from the ship that sunk and then you zap it onto your ship. But yeah. running the loot is kind of annoying. But again, they just improved it. You can now sprint with one handed items. So like. They go the on your belt and everything. And you, yeah, the skulls, the siren song, the, mm -hmm, or the siren, mm -hmm. the siren song. Crystal. The, there's yeah. a, there's skulls? a, there's a horn. There's a horn that you blow, oh, and yeah, yeah. it blows people off their ship, or it makes your ship go faster, or it's it makes you an airbender. It just okay. makes you an airbender, okay. and it's really overpowered if you get it, uh, and it's easier to get now. They made it like show up just randomly on islands and stuff like that. It's really cool. So. Yeah, they've made the game a lot better, but also a lot worse for PC. I, uh, just yeah, uh, guys, the game is just. But it's the perfect game for a rum for a rum drink. It's a it's a great game for like a a gimmick. I get that. It's just I can't. I only have so much time. Need a session, just one session, three hours. I'm I'm fine with giving you a session there we go I'm fine with that i just i'm i think my issue is that i'm upset with with what rare did with this game and with the state that it's in now like, dude i'm I shocked always come, that. always comes back to how rare has treated this ip yeah. and what they could have done what their investor was because if you look at the engine it makes sense and then the complete abandonment is just it 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 reeks of you were told by somebody who gets to make money decisions that this is no longer your focus. Oh yeah. Like we're going to make money off of this. We're not going to make a game. Yeah. Dude. They uh I, I'm just shocked that there hasn't been a new game. Like we had PUBG, right? Mm -hmm. And then Fortnite came out. And then I mean there's so many games that come out that were like, people like this. Let's make something similar but better. How is yeah. it? It's been like six years. Yeah. And they haven't done it for Sea of Thieves. Like, no one's yeah. been like, let's take this idea and make it actually good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the biggest problem there is just the, 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 the ship mechanics feeling good took them so long. Like an obnoxious amount of time to get right. Mm -hmm. And that is the thing that Rare nailed with Sea of Thieves. Ship mechanics feel amazing. Regardless of how you feel about everything else in the game, the water and ship mechanics. They have the immersion. Just feel perfect. Good. Yeah. And what they did good. is they they worked on that for 10 years and then they spent a year putting a game around that right <laughs> and so they have all this effort into making some parts of this game feel perfect and then very little effort into the parts around it in comparison and i think the problem is that what we need is a company that's willing to spend that 10-year investment to making it feel good but then spend another 10 years making a game around it and nobody has that time except for Rare. And Rare, unfortunately, doesn't have, I think, the funding or the go-ahead for Microsoft they don't to be able pull. to do that. They don't have the history or the pull. I think they, they also just done anything recently don't like that. I think they fundamentally don't agree with the point of the game and the direction of the game that we do. I mean, yeah. because they spent so much time making monkey island which is like a tribute Bro. to an old game of theirs Bro. and apparently it's it's good but it's like no one cares no one wants to do this like you you did your jack you did your like parts of the caribbean collab which was really cool why didn't you just do another one of those like <laughs> you know follow up on that um or something but they just did this random tribute to their old game i always get i don't know i just it's their mindset i cannot understand yeah by the way monkey island was phenomenal but also so different 
than like like the game or the game mode in Sea of Thieves. No, the game, uh, the original game. Oh, I didn't Monkey know that Island. was the name of the game. Okay. Yeah, it's called Monkey Island. So, so, so the, Rare didn't develop it, but I, I imagine there are probably some developers at Rare that used to work at Lucasfilm Games. It was by Lucasfilm Games back in the day. It's kind of like, I think the corollary that you would know of, it's kind of like a King's Quest type of deal, but it's mm -hmm. like ships and adventure and that type of thing. Um, but essentially, you have this like point and click type of deal where you explore, use, look at stuff, and all that kind of stuff. And it's good for that style of game, but you definitely have to like that style of game. Like it's it's nothing revolutionary in that regard. It's a point and click adventure type of deal. Mm -hmm. Made in 1991, I think. It was before I was. Like I, I think even the second it was one before was our time. before yes, for sure. I was born. I think the first one may even be older than that, honestly. The first one might even be like let's see. The, the, the first one's from nineteen ninety. The second one came out in nineteen ninety one. So they're they're very old. Ninety? Bruh. Bruh. Um It's a very famous franchise about swashbuckling, all that kind of stuff. But it's boring. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm but joking. I, I, but I think Anthony, you're entirely right. It's this homage to this game that there are probably maybe a hundred people that play Sea of Thieves that like are like, oh, that's a cool callback, you know. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do stuff like that, but you shouldn't put a huge investment into that. Right? It shouldn't be your all. Yeah. They should have had an outfit that was like the main character's outfit from Monkey Island and said, oh, we're releasing this cool outfit from Monkey Island. Huge shout out. This was like some of our people's inspiration back in the day. And they should have done like maybe a quest. Like a quest would have been cool. Kind of how they did a quest for the, oh. the jeweled beard. Yeah, deal. just like a tall tale or like a hidden thing yeah. that is really hard to unlock. Yep. It's not even and, a tall tale. Yeah, they should have done that in an outfit, and that mm -hmm. should have been it. You know? It's kind but of it like, not. it reminds me of, if I think a lot of people have like a family member or a friend that just always wants to talk about this like one thing that nobody understands, nobody cares about it. No one actually asked them to talk about it. <laughs> you know Damn but cool. you're trying to be nice because you love them and you're just like okay yeah cool that's that's cool but like change the subject and you like you always change the subject <laughs> right away where they never get the hint and it's like they it's that's the developers Anthony. man <laughs> yeah. that's the developer experience man of course they're not i don't think they listen also like there's a whole weird thing they have the insiders program right like the yeah nda like we're gonna test things program like dude just have a public test server just like world of warcraft and every other game like what are you doing this is weird <laughs> like, you're asking them for too much is what i would think that they're gonna say well no you're not asking for too much i think it gives you a picture of their weird way of thinking they're yeah. trying to be secretive they're trying to be private with things that are just like unnecessary it's like no like I, no other game does that you have no you've never released something into this game that was like oh my god i'm so glad that they prevented the beta testers from letting the world know about that it's like no there's <laughs> it doesn't do anything yeah. it's just weird. And there are so many better ways to do secretive information like you only do example. it internally yeah L like diablo 4 with the cow level that people still haven't unlocked yeah or like knowledge-based games in general like hiding information is part of the gameplay and like unlocking that information is part of the gameplay but mechanically you're not hiding how you do stuff or how combat works or how things work in the game. It's just you learn information and things in the game unlock because you learned it. And like that was never a secret 
mechanic, but you never showed it to anybody, right? Like you can do stuff like that rather than just being like, oh, here's a Monkey Island thing that we were working on for four years with half of our team. Instead of fixing Go the game. nuts! Yeah. <laughs> Have fun, kids. We've created yeah. an entire environment for you. By the way, it only fits really like our definition of fun. Uh, so, yeah. which is saying. just which is just money at this point. So, uh, so I played another game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Obviously, World of Warcraft. We're all playing World of Warcraft. But mm-hmm. yeah, I was about mm-hmm. to say, well, mm-hmm. I couldn't we'll play for, for a while because I had no power, no internet. Uh, yeah. We broke out probably the best. Like, okay, sorry, the Steam Deck is really good, but. Oh, probably the best handheld there is, which is right here. I got oh, yeah. skin yes. on it. The 3DS. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. The 3DS is a fucking goat. Dude, the 3DS is a goaded machine, man. Like, they, the 3DS has some of my favorite <clears throat> mechanics for a handheld because of the secondary screen. Yeah. And no other games do it as well like fire emblem on the 3ds is amazing dude it's the best and the the, the biggest thing is the battery life yeah Yeah. that's what we needed because we're working off a generator barely you know trying to charge things and stuff like that and this thing just lasts so we started playing uh pokemon sun and moon which has been fun now that's Uh... my like Sorry, nothing's I going on. Have said that out, I, that uh, I, 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 well, I wanted to say that uh, I think Pokemon Sun and Moon might be like the last quote unquote good Pokemon game because it's basically like all the old ones before they started being like, oh, we could try new mechanics, but we're not going to do it well. And we're going to make you pissed off that we didn't actually like implement Pokemon Arceus fully. Um, you know, it's like it's just like a classic Pokemon game, basically. It's I think. A- uh... I, don't, I I see what you're saying, but I think I would move it up one to wait. Was no. Sun and Moon after or before Black and White? Sun and Moon way, is after Black and White. Way um, after. It, I think yes. it, there's X and Ys before Sun and Moon. The thing I don't like oh, about yeah, Sun and is. Moon, though, compared to X and Y, is they stopped the 3D thing. You can't do 3D on the it's 3D. It's already- it's because it's already hard baked into most of the games now with all the uh, consoles that you're poss- you're possibly playing. 3D is expected, if that makes any sense. No, I mean, so no, like, there isn't 3D. The 3D mode is not. Oh, a, you mean the 3D on Sun and Moon is not. Is it doesn't not exist. Available. Um, but on Pokemon X and Y, it does. And yeah. I thought that part, I, I mean, that, that's the cool thing about the 3DS. It's like, you're going to like, ooh, I want to see this in 3D. Turn it up. And it's like, wow, that looks cool. It's 3D. Yeah, that should. The 3DS is probably my favorite way to play Monster Hunter. Really? Really? I So one of the things I don't like about Monster Hunter. Oh, we have a uh, expert Pokemon master in the chat, by the way. Oh yeah. It went we black, do. white, X, Y, sun, moon, trash. <laughs> Honestly, Everything after that I'm is trash. That I'm funny. surprised she said X, Y, and then said trash. I thought sun and moon. Mm-mm. Actually, no. Sun and moon had. She said X, Y, sun and moon. Okay. Everything after that is trash. Yeah. It, it doesn't get any better after that. No, it doesn't. I think yeah. sun and moon is like the last, like, oh, this is basically what we've been I doing would... all along. And. Sure. I would I would argue black and white is the last good one because that's that, probably that was what I would have yeah. said too. I think black and white was the the one that stood out out of like X Y Sun Moon Black White, and I haven't played anything after uh, Sun and Moon. Wait, but, did Black White come after Sun Moon? No, no Black no, and White. Before. No, it's before. It's right? before. Look yeah, at it was, the chat, Nat. Ash, yeah. the expert, has told us. Yeah. No, the, because I was going off of what Eric was saying. I understand. Yeah. I understand that there is scripture. I'm just. Cho- I'm also a man of the cloth, as it were. <laughs> yeah. I I have played up until Sun and Moon. So Same. well, I, don't don't play anymore. Yeah, I yeah, know, yeah. I, I ended at Sun and Moon, well, but no, I think you played Black and White. Arceus. I didn't play Arceus. Eric did. Yeah, I have touched Arceus. I Arceus is a good idea. Yeah, I played. It's I played Arceus a little poorly. You know what's really funny, Anthony? I don't even consider Arceus like a Pokemon game <laughs> in my head. <laughs> it's really not. Yeah. Yeah. It was a tech demo, actually. Yeah. 
I, I really don't <sighs> consider it the the like a Pokemon game in my head. And I think for me, after I played Black and White, Black and White was really really good. But I think it already was running into problems that I have with the Pokemon genre as it exists today, anyways. And while it was really really good, when I got to X and Y, it felt to me like the problems were more apparent in X Y. And mm-hmm. as we got to Sun and Moon, they were still good, but I just kept noticing the problems more and the more. The problems are not. I feel like going Black away, and White man. was the I last agree. one that I had like a shroud, and I was like, "Oh, so Black I didn't, and White's really good." I didn't play Black and White, but Ash has told me it's amazing. Um, so like, I played Silver. Or sorry, I played Red. <laughs> then I played Silver. <laughs> then I played X and Y. Oh my <laughs> then I played Whoa. Sun and Moon. Whoa! Wait, wait, <laughs> you wait! Skipped you skipped all did the good ones. Silver, and then you went straight yeah. to X and Y. Yeah, I think I need to go back. I think I need to no, go just backwards. You missed, you man. missed, but all of it. I you agree. Ruby Sapphire. Oh you my god, missed. Ruby Sapphire is. Honestly, I would probably just play Emerald. It's it's the better. Experience. I'd love to go backwards. Yeah. I I yeah, think that no. Today, it started going downhill after Black and White, but Sun yeah, and Moon yeah. is like is like the edge of the cliff. And then afterwards, yeah. it falls off the cliff. You still yeah, I feel like it's really easy green. to play now, right? You play red. Ooh. Then you play yellow. You skip to emerald. And oh, wait, are you telling me what to play? What's the one after <laughs> that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, start over. <laughs> Let's see. Let me, let, me, let me get the release. I was reading the chat. I'm sorry. Me. So I don't I don't make He's the mistake He's trying as hard as guys. He's trying as hard as. Oh, I, I, I forgot. I have that. wanted to play black for a long time. So maybe I should get white so my wife and I can play black and white together. Yeah. So if I, I can get it. Essentially, because you have the thirds in all of them, you can kind of cheat a little. So in the first generation, you have red, blue, and then you have yellow. But I feel like you have to play red or blue. I still own red. Yeah. And then you play yellow in addition. Because yellow, because you start off with Pikachu and he's following you around, it's just a totally different experience than red and blue. Like, it feels different. Then you have gold and silver, (laughs) which I think you can essentially play either one of them. Uh, Yeah, I played silver. You have Pokemon Crystal, which I feel like didn't really add too much on top of it. Like, you can do gold, silver, or crystal. And Mel's Mel's out. She's like, some. (laughs) But uh, gold and silver were amazing. Gold and silver were amazing. Well worth playing. Um, Then we move on to... Let's see. We go to the third generation, which I think Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, you can just do Emerald. You can just skip straight to Emerald <laughs> on that one. Mm-hmm. Then I actually oh, think, God. and this is where uh, Nat may disagree with me entirely. What is this? I, I was telling him how we play it. So essentially our current path, red, Gold. Red, yellow. Red, yellow. Sorry. Red, yellow. You can do gold, silver, or crystal. Either one of those three. You only really need to do one of them. Okay. Then you can go and you do emerald. Mm -hmm. Which I feel like is the de facto over. It's the best one over over ruby and sapphire for sure. Unlike the previous one where I feel like Crystal didn't add a lot, I feel like it Emerald didn't really do just, anything. Yeah. It, it just, just it just made me a simp for Suicune. That's yeah. all it did. Yeah, hundred percent. Where it gets uh controversial, I did not feel like the fourth generation did anything. Yeah, the Digimon of that just generation were terrible. Shut up, Anthony. <laughs> but Shut I, up. I feel like you can essentially... Adults are talking. 
<laughs> you garbage creature. <laughs> the Digimon just weren't. Oh, 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 weren't up here we go. <laughs> but yeah, I oh, feel Eric, like you can skip the fourth generation entirely and go straight to black and white. What are the names of the fourth generation? It's uh, Diamond and Pearl. Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. Oh, okay. I think, okay, so... Platinum is Diamond Pearl and Platinum is that's Platinum is Giratina, correct? Yeah, they're the, the yeah you can skip the Mechana. Yeah, you can you can skip it. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. I think yeah. I understand why that you have to remember this was a time when they were rebooting, mm-hmm. revamping, and rethinking about Godzilla and all of these. Uh, Kaiju. When, when was we had Pacific Rim. Pokemon X and out. Y. Fifth, fifth generation. Pokemon right? X and Y had the Megas. No, was fourth, it fifth generation? Uh, or, si- or sixth? Fifth generation was black and white. Did black and white give us Megas? Or was that... Is that it was uh, right before that. It was fourth generation. Gave us... So fourth generation gave us... Fourth the, generation didn't give us Mega. Pokemon X and Y has the Fourth generation big... was still Cynthia. Cynthia didn't have Mega Evolutions. Cynthia just no, pushed your not shit Mega. The no, 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 no. You're right. Not four. Mega e- Evolution. <laughs> Mecha. Mecha. It had those the 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 weird kaiju looking ancient ones. Oh, so it had the yeah. giant centipede. It had yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, the, Dialga like, and Palkia. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, I see I'm, what you're talking about. Yes. Okay. I'm not saying okay. mega evolution. I'm saying like mecha, mecha. like a mecha guy, mecha theme, Zilla, mecha themes. Like mecha, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like everything was big, and they were looking at Pacific Rim was really popular. <laughs> Kaiju's were getting popularity again. We were seeing this huge resurgence in. That's the- when the Digimon entered the Pokemon world. <laughs> Yeah. That's when the Digimon legitimately the Pokemon, the Pokemon started to look like world. Digimon. <laughs> yeah, it felt very weird for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. Okay, so Ash, Ash is like that's the only one I actually ever I never played. Uh, yeah, I I Ash agrees as what I'm hearing. Like, all I'm hearing right now is that the order that the games are coming out does not change. Which what is mean? fine. I, f- I feel like you can completely skip certain chapters of Pokemon because oh, certain generations don't do anything. I mean, you like do first, second, third generation, and fifth generation, and then you quit. I the say Pokemon. you do. I say you do Fire Red or Leaf Green instead of even starting at the first generation. Ah, uh, no. I okay. I disagree. I think you need. You need context. Yeah. I think so. So are you are you saying this from like an intro, like somebody's like first figuring this out, like they're just figuring out Pokemon in general, or are you saying like the ideal way of progressing through the game? As I think, as an adult, if you're an adult going into Pokemon and you're like, I want to know what this is, you start with Red to get the contact. You, I think, I think most people who are adults right now would not have the patience for Red, Red and Blue. I think they would. I I really don't think they Mm. would have that problem. Now, I do think. That if I was introducing to the, this to a kid, I'm starting them on yellow. Yes, absolutely. I think there is absolutely. yellow is probably the most intuitive. It feels the best. It has this connective piece throughout the game. You follow Ash and the show like one to one. All of these different pieces of culture just instantly connect. The most popular figure in Pokemon history is literally on the screen following you around. It is cute. It is just like... Is it though? Yeah. Is it? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it just works. It works so well. To, to, to like, It is... It's just perfect. It, it is the perfect Pokemon game in my opinion. I think yellow is the best one out of mm. all of them like if, if you were to ask me what's the best pokemon game i think i would have to say yellow and i think mechanically there are better ones but i don't think any of them hit the cultural level of yellow at all 
it has a hundred it has the 152 pokemon it feels great yeah it's nice everything's recognizable you can remember every pokemon neat it's kind of yeah yeah, when I it skipped so many great. generations and I came back and I was like, what am I looking what at? I, what, are you what are these now? things that are popping what up? Mean? Like what what I th- what blows my mind is that you were like, yeah, I'm down with that. <laughs> let me let me put it like, this way. When you were at school as a kid and you were playing yellow, you could talk about Pokémon and your experience Based on what level Pikachu was. Yep. Oh, Do you know how cool it is to have yep. like a connective piece with somebody? Like that is what people love. Hum- hu- the human psyche loves to be able to re- have a reference point for s- somebody else's engagement to something that is easily understood, easy to connect to. Being able oh, to go know. and say, my Pikachu is level 42. I just unlocked Dude. Thunderbolt, and you're like, I weird. dude, classic, <laughs> classic. Wild did that. Yeah, you're like, yeah. I'm level 42. Oh, you're like Stranglethorn Vale. Oh my god, yes. I died there so many times. Dude, man, people are, love that weird. shit, and no other Pokemon game does it as well as Yellow, and at least for that. Fair, fair. I I don't know. I th- I feel like, what is it? I don't know what it is about the second generation for me, but maybe it's because it was like the first time that I actually got to see the colors like in a, in more than one dimension, but that's whenever the games became special to me. It was also probably timing too, because the second generation we all played Everybody initially was playing that. while we were in like, our puberty years. We were literally playing. What was puberty. that? Puberty. 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 <laughs> but we were playing that after we had started developing like long term memory connections, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> Do you, put, right? you put a cart together? <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, no. Of course. <laughs> Of course she did. I mean, they're cl- they're classics now. They'll probably be worth more eventually. Yeah, <laughs> eventually. But like that, it's so I'm I down. can totally understand why the second generation would actually head home more. And I think from a mecha- a technical perspective, like a game perspective, the second mm. generation is better than the first generation, for sure. But culturally. And like from a feeling perspective, an emotional impact perspective, yellow, having Pikachu there right next to you going through that is hard. Do you think yellow is a better experience after watching Detective Pikachu? Yeah. So watch yeah. Detective Pikachu first. I have not watched Detective Pikachu. Really? Well, it's, it's actually, actually really, really good. good. It's actually, it's actually really, really good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was actually, actually really hilarious good. and I've awesome. I heard that there's a licky tongue in there and it's kind of problematic you heard from people Fair. that struggle with everything yeah. <laughs> yeah i was about to say it's one of those movies that's just fun and yeah. they really do the pokemon uh, like so good world justice no, like, I they don't do it. anything in that movie where i'm like eh, really? they missed with that or they yeah. shouldn't have gone with that yeah, yeah, okay yeah. it really feels just fun it, it's, it's so good it's honestly fun it's cool I, I, it is well worth a watch as somebody who grew up on pokemon i, I it I did not it. deserve the weirdness that i think a lot of people crowded about I think some people just really well, wasn't it? Like we're not, there's just like, no, there's just people that when they see any sort of like attempt at live action, anything, they're like, no, just no. Oh yeah. And I could, I honestly, it didn't feel bad. I mean, here's the thing. We're looking at a 70% rotten tomatoes, which for a game movie, that's really not bad at all. Oh, 68%. Once I click on it, it's like, Se- here's the thing 79% on the popcorn meter which is the public audience score wow so 80% of people essentially love this movie like it's great in a lot of ways it's fun oh wait Warcraft got 76% on the popcorn meter 
I actually Warcraft? love yeah. the Warcraft. Movie. Me too. The Warcraft movie is a tech marvel. Yeah. It's one of the I have best. Yet like, to see it. <clears throat> have yet well, to see a movie <clears throat> give me that kind of graphic experience. Dude, the, 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 the fantasy, the fantasy, yeah. like yeah. it does really well. I think the problem is. Here's the thing, the Warcraft movie is too short, and relies on you having played. It was. Warcraft. I really wish mm-hmm. they made more. <laughs> and so, I don't think the general audience will love the Warcraft movie as much of a as we did because uh there's a lot of pre-knowledge that we just knew and we probably subconsciously didn't even think about it i know on the first time i watched it i didn't even think about stuff well, that you know, i just knew the crazy thing is my whole family loved it and they didn't i mean my dad played warcraft like was, two and one but that's it but i think but the, the thing girls. that you're probably forgetting is that like they grew like they didn't know the story of World of Warcraft. They didn't know anything they, about it. No, they just no, watched no, no, no. it and they're like, this was like, a good movie. But you're I, like, I'm not talking specifically about like story aspects. I'm talking about like an understanding of how those types of things work. The that gamers understand or people in the gamers. gaming sphere understand that that movie just kind of assumes that you understand. And it doesn't like create or explain like why some of those things are just cool. Yeah. So uh, before we go too far away from the 3DS, I did want to share one more thought that we had, or I had the other day. Okay. The only thing I ever didn't like about the 3DS is with how skinny and tiny it is, my hands would cramp up so fast. I could not play games, even though I was enjoying them and I wanted to. So I had to get this thing, which maybe you can tell has these thick like squishy yep. membranes so yep. now i can actually use it right i mm-hmm. thought you 3d printed that at first that would be cool uh but this this is just this is great now what i realized the other day is that nintendo missed a great opportunity another huge thing about this especially if i don't have these things on this actually fits in my pocket easily Dude. it just goes in my pocket what yeah. if, imagine this, you take something thick like this mm-hmm. and you put a Joy-Con on the side of it that's not skinny, that makes it like a real ergonomic controller that you can attach as an option to the Nintendo 4DS, right? And then at the same time, you can disconnect it just like on the Switch and you can just prop it up on a table like this and you can play it with just the controllers or Leave the controllers behind for the day. Throw it in your pocket and go wherever you want. Like the ladders about to explode. Combining right. the switch with this would have been amazing. The switch is goaded. Yeah, the switch, the switch is, is. I played the first time that I ever played Monster Hunter was on that, the switch. The 3DS. And Eric, yeah, Eric. The 3DS speak on that. I'll be right back. Yeah, the Monster yeah, Monster Hunter and the 3DS I actually think is the best one. Um, I think I said it a little bit earlier, and y'all were like, "Oh, really?" Yeah, Monster. It's it's Monster Hunter. Except all the menu, 3D, quick stuff, the stuff that you usually is very tedious. Yeah. All happens on that bottom screen. Hmm. Well, you know, I have it. I should probably play it some more. It's really good. I I actually, it is my favorite monster. It's actually the Monster Hunter I've probably played the most. I think I have. Uh, Like, I used to play it all the time when I was traveling or and things like that back in college. That's cool. I, I think the biggest that. thing for me is just that Monster Hunter World is like my first real Monster Hunter experience, and it's just uh, so pretty. <laughs> it know? is. It is a hundred percent. Like when it comes to graphically, like obviously the 3DS is just not up to par with World. I mean, it can't. Compete, you know. But there's a really cool thing that, like, when you're playing on the 3DS and you're looking at it in 2D, and then you turn on 3D, and suddenly it looks like it's a higher resolution yeah mm-hmm. and it's cool that is cool it's just fucking cool it's man. just cool. Fucking cool man it's just so fucking cool man yeah. i cool. can't stand it so what have y'all been playing world of warcraft <sighs> yeah i haven't had time for anything else it's sad world of warcraft's fun yeah. world of warcraft is fun but at the same time i'm also i i think i'm my holiday period for my like less than studious brain is over 
And like the studious brain's like, all right, time to get the fuck out. <laughs> I got stuff that I got to do. Mm. Um, now I will say I am, I am planning something mm. and I'm going to need some help to figure mm. out what I do here. Mm. So I have like, 40 hours of flying coming up pretty soon. Jesus Oh, God. Christ. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were yeah. like a pilot all of a sudden, and you were flying. No. <laughs> I was like, oh, so, shit. Like, How do, what? <clears throat> what do you mean? <laughs> I think because of that, I'm not going to be able to get the, I'm not going to get to play. There's just going to be a lot of traveling, and I'm not going to get to play like World of Warcraft because I'm not, I don't know how my internet's going to be. I'm not going to have access, you know, mm. all these types of things. So I'm thinking about getting the stream deck. Steam deck. Steam deck. That's so Thank confusing. You. I hate that I, they did yes. that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Why? Steam Why did they do deck. that to us? I'm thinking about getting the steam deck. Yeah. Finally. I've been wanting to get one for a while. I just, you know, I haven't had a lot of. Oh my God. They have the I'm new like, one. Oh yeah. They have the OLED one. I'm going to get the OLED Better one. battery and everything. Yeah. Oh my God. And so I, I've, I've, I've always said, Hey, I'm going to get one of these at some point. I just. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get it until I need it because when I'm at home, I'm just gonna, not going to use it that often. And I travel every now and then, but not usually I'm driving or usually on flights. It's only like an hour and a half, two hours. Like, you know, it's just never been enough to where I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit down and buy the stream deck now. Um, okay. Steam deck. Jeez. Yeah. Steam deck, my guy. Steam uh, deck. So I'm going to get the steam deck and I have to decide what games I am finally going to sit down and play that are single player that I can just boom, get through. And I'm going to have undivided attention essentially for the multiple plane rides slash traveling slash just being in India without any other. Uh, so like, are you only going to do steam games? Or are you going to do like, are you going to emulate or like? Interesting. I, I, I haven't thought about that. Because you could. I, yeah, I'm not opposed. Not opposed. But that is one thing that I want us to, I want us to think on. It's a homework assignment. And in the next episode, maybe we'll, we'll touch on it. Because I just started putting this plan into motion. A game like, that okay, you will I gotta be able start to thinking. And dump a ton of time into. There are some requirements. I want to be able to complete this game in its entirety. And then I say, uh, I say you, uh, I say you just test out Factorio just to let Kirk know how it is. So they are <laughs> releasing the new Factorio, uh, DLC Verified. this month. Yeah. Um, and yes, I, it's so for anybody who doesn't know, I have tried Factorio, but when I played it, it was an alpha. Mm. Um, so and thus it kicked your fucking teeth in well like 90 percent of the game wasn't there when i played you could not copy and paste hmm. like that wasn't a thing Yikes. um so it was very different than it is now i've seen some of the stuff that happens now it's crazy so like i don't know i've thought about playing it i think my problem is that it every time i try to play it it feels way too much like work after a certain period of time and i'm like oh man this is i've got to get out of here <laughs> yeah. be careful dude apparently no man's sky is an option no man's sky is not an option it is it's offline i will not back it up is, it is an there option has, there have been videos in the past few months that are like this game is is legit now. Like it is. It, I it wasn't. Act, now yeah, it is. It was not. Now it is. I do actually think that No Man's Sky is much much better. Now I played it when they did the. It was like two year update or something like that. I played it and it was pretty enjoyable from a lot of perspectives. I think the problem with No Man's Sky is that it's just not a game for me. It is a collection gathering space sim. Crafting. Yeah. Discovery. Yeah. And so the gameplay mechanic is all about that. I know what game and I want you to play. What game? Dungeon Keeper Gold. 
Dungeon I haven't Keeper. played Dungeon Keeper. Oh, you have? I thought I talked to you about it a lot and you hadn't played it. No, I, I, Dungeon Keeper was based on like, you know, my mom used to play that game and game. she would backslap the little game. worker imps over and over yeah. again until they. <laughs> Dude, I love Dungeon Keeper. I, okay. I played the crap out that of that game is crazy cool. And I feel bad for anyone that's never experienced it. Oh, because it's it's Dungeon insanely cool. It is really cool. And um, I don't it's just hard to explain. It's now so one day, by the way, we have to play. Uh, there's a board game that's like loosely based on Dungeon Keeper. Yeah, that'd in be some cool. ways. And uh, that, that'd be a fun one to play. Can I play the... Dungeon Keeper? Oh, you could play Dredge. No, it's not long enough. Yeah, oh, I've yeah. I've almost um I've also almost beaten Dredge. Disco yeah. Elysium. Disco. I've already Elysium. played through D Disco Elysium. Prince of Persia. The, I haven't played the new there Prince you go. of Persia yet. That is an option. Mm-hmm. Uh, space? No, not the Space Marine game. It's probably the new Space Marine. Game. Yeah, probably the DLC of Cult of the Lamb. <laughs> Ooh, I've Cult of the Lamb is I, great. Yeah, I've played through the base Cult of the Lamb, and, and I haven't done the all the DLC stuff. Prince of Persia, because the expansion's coming soon. Really? Already? Yeah, they're working on an ex uh, the Mask of Darkness is available now, September seventeenth. Ooh, did you ever like properly play Project Zomboid? I have not. But Dude, isn't that an online game? You no, know, it does. It, it can be. That game we played on the Steam Deck. It was really enjoyable. Okay. It, Wild, it's cool. Also, Wild Frost, if you, if you play some I know you probably don't need it, but if you do need some workout motivation, that game makes you want to work out. Because it's got that, like, you got to do push-ups and stuff to get stronger. And then you're like, maybe I should do push-ups for real. <laughs> That's funny. My, me and my wife did that a lot. And then eventually we couldn't walk. <laughs> we did so many squats. Jeez. The funny thing is I, I've Googled this, uh, this homework assignment. And 99% of games that people offer, I know you've already played. Uh World of Horror is Steam Deck approved, according to Ash. Nine Souls, yes. World of We've Horror. talked about Nine Souls on the on the podcast. I talked about it a few weeks ago, and I, or I guess months ago. Now. Um, Eric's like, I have a homework assignment for you guys for like next week, and all of the ADHD people are like, No, now or never. <laughs> never, now or never. We will all forget about this. Do not, this do next not week. operate in half yes. ways. <laughs> But yeah, I have I've started putting that in my back pocket to think about like what I could. What about Mad Max? I, I don't. I haven't heard anything about it. I haven't either. I don't. I know, I mean I know the movies. There's Mad a Max is a game. Yeah, dude. What I about would skip that? What about Dune? Is that on Steam Deck? Well, that's a board game, right? That you have there's to a, play with like other people. No, there's a video. There's a Dune video game. I don't know. Maybe it's not out yet. It might not be out yet. I think people might be looking forward to it, actually. Hmm. But yeah, there were. Yeah, I was trying to think about some like that, that I, I know there's a bunch of stuff that I've thought about and I got to just dredge them all back up from the depths of my memory. Did you ever play Spider-Man? Uh, I played the original. I heard that the second one wasn't as good as the original and the original was good but not like, anything outstanding to me like it was a great game but not really that it like i it was one of those where i play through it and i'm like okay this was fun <laughs> so i'm like i i'm like uh, i'm i have no desire to interact with the mechanics for longer did you play horizon uh zero dawn yeah 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 I played okay. through the Horizon Zero Dawn. Eric, you're making it really hard to select games for you to actually play. Because he's played them all. For a long piece of That's time. That's fair. This is the, this is why I was like, eh. I mean, maybe you guys you could, do the you could do the job for me. That'd be <laughs> oh my great. god. Well, I think that's internet only. It is. That's definitely internet only. Gotta be offline, offline games. Oh, Gloomhaven. 
I, so funnily enough, we are getting close to almost completing 100% in Gloomhaven. That's I think nice. we still have about 20 weeks left. Jesus but, Christ. Uh, but when you consider that now we've been playing for like five years, two years, well, we had to start over. You have to remember, we started over when we switched from board game to digital. We had to start over. So we did like 50 weeks before uh, COVID happened. Then mm. we took a break. Mm. And then the digital version came out and we started on digital. And, now and then the digital version had an update in which it started oh to crash God. every Terrible. other minute. The worst. <laughs> the worst. Uh, I, one of the ones I was thinking about doing was the new Silent Hill 2 remake. I've heard it's absolutely fantastic. Horrifying. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm in for that though. You know me. Um but yeah, I guess that leads us to the topic of the night. We've all been playing a lot of World of Warcraft. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 We've so, been so playing now uh, we have a ton of experience. I just want to get breakdowns Snap's how turn. you feel about this expansion what do you like what do you not like what are your hot takes give me some clips Anatomist where Decimus we, like, people will hate us on the internet but like we'll get views because of it that'd be great <laughs> sir <laughs> <laughs> um so so the man currently playing world of warcraft during the podcast <laughs> oh my gosh one second let me open up battle net yes. i have known just by the clicking and, and the not and the looking at the look, other monitor look 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 there are parts of my brain that can Madness. operate this game no no on automatic it's crazy that's oh one of my the things God, that's one of my notes sanctum of the light that's one of my notes it's one of my notes no, it's one i of have my to chill. Chill, no, chill chill yeah chill I'll tell you why. I'll if tell my you why. computer wouldn't shit the bed i'd be doing the same thing right now <laughs> absolutely 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 we're all doing so, the raid and the podcast at the same time at the same time guys so it's my it's my it is my <laughs> glowing recommendation that they have made this game fun for me again hell yeah however i am quickly coming up to the same wall it stopped me the last time I played this game where mm -hmm. I'm like, this is just ones and zeros. And once I get to a certain point, they're just going to go ahead and put another wall in front of me and I'm going to get to that wall. And then I'm just going to wait again. And I don't, and there's no, there's no glowing feeling of getting to that wall anymore. Is this like gearing? Like, is no, this specifically not gearing, gearing? Not gearing, not gearing. Hmm. my experience is based around the actual end game experience and completing the end game activity. It has been, it's the reason why I played destiny. It's the reason why I played. Wow. It's the reason why I probably play mostly only single player games. Cause at the very end you have completed an experience, right? Yeah. And there's like, there's a feeling of, I don't cool. want to say I don't want to say accomplishment. I want to say like it's more than that. You know what I mean? It's like getting to the end of a good book. Yeah, it's like yes, it's exactly like getting to the end of a good book. And so now that I am in this again and going through all these experiences, I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like you can kind of, I can kind of see myself getting to the end of this and like having some kind of like glowing. I don't know, experience to summarize everything that I've done, but I'm now on my third all. I have done the raid in, in a in a format that has cheapened it. And now when I consider uh, raids and gearing up and everything, I'm just like, it's just ones and zeros. And I don't know if that's just like where I am mentally. Like maybe I'm just like looking at it in a pessimistic manner, but 
I f- I am now babying that side of me that like is trying to get me to stop playing by going, oh, but look at all these transmogs that we can farm. Look at all this stuff that we can do a, 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 like along the way that makes you feel as if you've actually had a journey, right? So my other glowing uh, recommendation of this, that's a, that's a wonderful little plushie you got there, bud, um, is, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Tell me it's not on your hand. Got all the Murlocs. Oh, tell me. Okay. Okay. I thought it was a puppet. I was like, no, absolutely not. <laughs> You're giving me flashbacks from my uncle. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. He does he does puppets? He did. Oh, oh that God. must be wild. Oh my God. I can imagine. Crazy. But um anyway, uh the one other thing I'll say is the graphical the graphic uh design of a lot of the raid gear from the previous uh, expansions, not all of them, but some of them like Legion, um, Shadowlands. um, What else was it? Battle, uh, battle for Azeroth. Uh, Not so much warlords. There's some really cool stuff that like gets me like, kind of like going like there was this, there's this one armor that I was like, I don't know where to find this. Like I can't find it on any of the sites. I just, I don't, I don't know where it is. And you had to do the mythic version of the battle of something in um, battle for Azeroth. Mm. Mm, yeah. Battle for uh, the, the one with Jaina at the end, the one with Jaina at the end. Yeah. And I remember going like, okay, I don't know where I need to go, but let me, let me just go ahead and walk around and just go to every single raid in this area. Cause I know it's in this raid. I just don't know which one and eventually got it. And that was probably the most fun I had had because it was like, mm. it was something I did solo. It was something that was challenging in a different way and didn't require me to have to engage with the grindy social aspect of this where I have to deal with people who are just here to get in and out as fast as possible. I can spend as much time with it as I want. And that is my negative to go along with this pairing. There is no reason to get into like a social relationship on this game. Like the relationships that we've all developed. Yes. With each other. Because we already have, right. I, like maybe it's just because I'm an adult now, but I don't feel the pull to be like going to go into a raid and jump into chat. I'm like fuck that. Yeah. Why, well, why I mean, would I, I would say it was thanks to the way the game used to be without the raid finders and all those helps, and also like I would say we accidentally became friends. Oh yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? It was definitely not on purpose. Like we were trying. <laughs> yeah. That shit happened on accident. Yeah, Nat never would have chose us. <laughs> no, don't say it like that. I totally would have. I'm just teasing. I'm just uh, teasing. I totally would have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, uh, I think uh, there's a weird thing about the game because this game, I can, I think I can relate to what you're saying. I want to play it a lot. But then you get to a certain point where there's like, hmm, do I even try to do that? Or can I? Will people even let me do that with them type of thing? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the important thing is like, well, if you had fun, there's nothing wrong with just like not playing and playing something else. And then if you want to come back when they do a big release, sure. But if you don't, you don't. It's one of those things where it's like, you had fun. Yeah. Cool. That's all that matters is for a period right. of time you had fun. But I don't want to stop having fun in this format because it's yeah. one that I know. It's the familiarity of it all that kind of yeah. like shoots me you in the foot, right? I think that WoW in its current state is very in a very interesting spot. Mm-hmm. Because I also think it does a really good job of what Anthony's saying. It's always just there for people who have played it. I think the new player experience is absolutely abysmal. Yes. But for people that have already played it, you can jump back in and 
be having that same fun fairly quickly. And so it does make it really easy for you to be like, oh, okay, cool. I really enjoyed this expansion. I'm going to 8 point or 12.2 or, you know, whatever the next big version is that's going to come out is going to be super exciting. And you don't always have to grind. Like one of the things is like that just due to life right now, especially for me, like I would love to go hard on heroics and mythic rating mm -hmm. right now. Cause that's my favorite aspect of the game. Obviously I have right. like rating is why I play. Wow. I love rating. I think it's more enjoyable than any other piece of content. It really is. And the dungeons and yeah. stuff just don't compare. The delves are just like, eh, and okay, you do them because it's the best loot <laughs> in the yeah. shortest amount of time. Yeah. Like, but when it really comes down to the raids are just fun. And if you find the right, like I found a group that I have run with a few times now where the raid leader is just super chill and he's just like, okay, we're going to do this. You know, they're talking, joking, having a good time. And like when you find the right group, that's just chill about it and kind of like on your level with it. And you're just all there to have fun. Like it's just super awesome. And it's just like you get to go and it's like a movie where everything just works perfectly. Everybody's having fun. Mistakes are made and people are just laughing. <laughs> Mistakes about were made! It, you know? And like, <laughs> it's just super enjoyable. And that's really, really cool. And like for that type of group, they're going to do heroic for a few weeks and then probably go into mythic. Uh, but mm -hmm. like the time aspect of doing mythic is just something that I don't, don't have right now. But I, I imagine WoW is in a state, I think in this expansion especially, it's in a really good spot. And it has enough viewership, it has enough backing, it has enough people behind it that if they keep moving in the right directions in some ways, I feel like it'll still be fun. Dude, for how, a, a how cool would it be if they made it to where you could use the follower dungeons to do follower heroics follower mythics like and, creating your own squad and gearing them up yeah and and like the I three well like the three I of us could go and do the heroic raid with and, our heroic followers and have them and have them not be the problem it, it, it's if we can't accomplish it then that's uh, we can't do it that's yeah. a design mentality that would have to be applied specifically to follower raids I think they're then, moving then towards looking, that yeah. idea, though, but just it, because they have could, the follower dungeon. Like, like if they did it, you don't get ahead of the curve, right? But maybe you do get something that says, hey, I completed this on Heroic with my follower thing. And then, because Eric was telling me that, that, you know, we know Eric's an insanely good healer. Mm -hmm. But people won't let him into their random Heroic raid without him having already completed it. Which is... Yeah, which, which is fair. It's like, okay, well, if you don't, if no one will let me play without having completed it, I can't complete it. Well, maybe yeah. people would allow you into their group if you had completed the follower version of it. And it's like, okay, they know the you mechanics. You at least have they to survive. know the mechanics. You have to be able to move. Yeah, I could see that. I, could I see do that. think that is a worthwhile investment for them to do because I think there are a few problems with just the culture of how WoW is right now. And one of them is that people don't want to play with you if you haven't proved that you've done the thing. So having, and like, that's not going to change because the culture of wow, isn't going to change. I don't think, and I, I don't think it not has to soon. like, I think there is a way to design around that, but it's kind well, of the ship has left the dock. So I agree yeah. with Anthony, like having more ways to prove that you understand the fights mechanics and can do the work that our solo experiences kind of allow you to do that. Essentially saying, Hey, I, I know the mechanics and I have the eye level. Like I'm going to be fine. Would be cool. I'd be down for that too. Mm. There are, there are still a number of cracks in WoW as it exists in today's state that I dislike, but like I would really love to do Mythic Plus, but 
I'm, even I'm, more so than raids, Mythic Plus is just a non enjoyable experience with um, the current with what? pugs, like not knowing who you're doing, not group knowing with. the people. If you don't oh, have dude, like, I'm, if you don't have a guild of people that you actually like know, yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm just so shocked that they don't do the whole like rating system. I mean, they, I'm pretty sure they do it in Overwatch now, where you can rate people on how they were in the thing that you did with them. And then you can filter out like people that are just going to go and pull everything without making sure everyone's ready. Without thinking. You know, and you can filter out people that are really aggressive and mean and stuff like that. And weird yeah. stuff like that. You can filter out the people in our freaking normal run last night that <laughs> after every boss, two to three people would drop out of the raid. Yeah. And it's like that is a pain in the dick. <laughs> it's like they we should have been able to say, okay, no, these people have a negative yeah. rating now because they just left us. And, and it I, should it, carry. It should yeah. carry with the people who are like, oh yeah, I'm gonna keep on doing that. Like you shouldn't be able to just shit on somebody's bed and just be and they have to be okay with it. Yeah. You know? It's so weird. Yeah, it it's there are some weird things about that. But I, I think it's kind of the state of the wow. And then, of course, there are the the add-on problems and everything like that. And I really problems. do wish, like, so on one hand, there are game mechanics. So there are a bunch of problems right now with wow, in my opinion, in the sense that add-ons have created a system with peop with how people play the game and the game developers at Blizzard have had to essentially catch up to add-ons in every aspect of the game because they want to keep add-ons. And they're not going to get rid of add-ons ever. They're just not going to. They, they've already they put that out there. They're like, weird. add-ons are going to be a thing. That's just how the game works. It's how the game's going to be. People play the game with that I in think, mind. Yeah. They design the game with add-ons in mind now. The I'm way not to, that's the right thing to do. But. The way to think about it for people that don't like play the game is they have to design the game for Tony Stark with Jarvis. And Jarvis knows everything about the game. And Jarvis is telling Tony, this is about to happen. Be ready this for this, Tony. You have to be ready this for this happens mechanic. happens in five, yeah. four. Like, yeah. You have an AI telling you, Okay, this is about to happen, so just do this. And it's like, okay, easy. Thank you. Easy peasy lemon. And F so crazy. what they do is they make a, there are a bunch of mechanics in the raid that are very, very simple. And you could theoretically play the raid, the normal raid, without any add ons. The normal raid would be a nightmare for people without add ons. Because you're like timing everything, working together. If everybody in the raid did not have add ons, you would have a hundred different things you have to be wary of, of and like keep track of and do and manage. Yeah, it's yeah. insane. Like, I, I can't imagine not being told taunt now. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was like, able to. You have to actually yeah. go through, you have to wipe. Yeah. You have to see the yeah. cast bar and, and see that, oh, how many times has the other tank been hit by this? Yep. And, oh, also, don't stand in that. Oh, and watch out for this. Oh, and pull that ad. And it's just like... And back so in the day, things. like, when we were in Classic, you have to remember, there were, like, five mechanics throughout the entirety of the raid that you had to worry about. And so what you would do is you would put a target of target, right? You'd have buffs on for that target of target frame, and you'd, you'd have a little sticky note with a drawn-on picture of the buff that you have to look for and with a number on it that says two. And you'd look at that sticky note and look at the other tank and be like, okay, taunt now. You know? <laughs> like, like, but that's all you had in like the entirety of the raid. And so they were the more simplistic. This is why classic raids are feel so, so easy. Because now you, what used to have to be done by hand, you're doing with all these new automated tools like DBM, bigwigs, all that kind of stuff. The problem with all of that is there are now mechanics where, 
for the average player, they're just too complicated because you have to track so many things and there are people in every raid that do not use DBM bigwigs or anything like that. And you're expecting them to track a hundred different things that you're being told. So it's super easy. And in reality, it's a nightmare to track that many things in the basic WoW UI because the basic WoW UI is not what the game is designed for. Yeah. Because the game is designed with the intent of you having add-ons. I Like if you go and look at the number of tracking metrics on a screen of somebody doing the mythic race, you will under like it is impossible to do a, a mythic raid without without some form of 40 add-on. different weak ores that were custom yeah. scripted by your guildie to track raids. Even in a myth, when I was doing a bunch of mythic raiding in like BFA and Miss of Pandaria and like all these other expansions, every guild that I did mythic raiding for had somebody who wrote custom scripts for like weak ores for people that would send them out, especially for healers for things like debuffs and when you should do them or like who should be dispelling what or who should pop their aura mastery when or who should use devotion when like because all of that is so custom to your group and you need to be able to time them and having somebody call those things exactly dude. the right time yeah. and everything so is impossible when when you're talking about this all you make me want is world of warcraft raids but in monster hunter there's yes. 25 of us doing the raid. It's as complex as World of Warcraft, but as visceral and skill based and in your face as Monster Hunter. Imagine, like, oh, you're on Mythic Plus, right? Or Mythic Raid. And now, when the monster does some sort of crazy barrage, well, everyone has like a dodge, right? But, oh, you can't just dodge you don't just have an iframe you have to dodge into this direction and be in this tiny little hole while all the fire goes around you or all the poison goes around you and if you missed it you got poisoned and if you have a potion you can get rid of it maybe but i I think i think they've tried that in final fantasy oh yeah um well, but, a lot well, Final of the, Fantasy is more War of Warcrafty, mecha- though. Well, did yeah. you, did you ever play or see anybody play Terra online? No. So Terra online was a an action MMO in the sense that you had different abilities that you would do. It wasn't tab targeting in the same sense. Yeah. So you would actually do abilities at different locations. And it wasn't as complex as something like uh, Monster Hunter, obviously, because you had so many people to worry about and it was made so long ago. Like dealing with Monster Hunter might be possible in today's world because of improvements in server architecture and stuff. But back then it just wasn't even a theoretical possibility, really, especially in 2011 or something like that when Terra was really popular. Um, But... Terra Online had things like that Mm -hmm. uh, and a very dynamic combat system where you'd be doing different things. I mean, like, imagine you're playing Monster Hunter and you're playing a mythic fucking boss and you Mm -hmm. have to toggle to first person mode instead of third person mode because if you don't, you're not going to be able to put yourself in the perfect spot to not die. You know, and it's just a, a skill check type of thing. Just like think, in a raid and wow. I think really what I want is less so a something new and more of a company that decides to reset the status quo of the wow genre of mmos that i don't feel like is happening right now every every mmo is really trying to be something different trying to be new i really want a i honestly i want blizzard to release a world of warcraft colon reckoning where 
if you want to play on these new servers with the new expansions going forward, you have to make a new character or reset your character to level one. And you re-level up. It's a new 1 to 60 experience in a new Kalimdor Azer like Azeroth mm -hmm. that only has like 25, 30 zones. And they 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 can keep the same engine. They can keep the same ideas. And the core concepts being no add-ons. And they design the game in that mode with that idea with the new ui because i think the new ui is close to where it needs to be i still yeah. don't think it's good enough it's definitely not good enough for how the content is being designed right now but i think it's good enough for there to be good design around it and if they improve it a little bit with like a wow 2.0 type of thing like i'm talking about i think they can make it where it needs to be and Azeroth Reckoning or something like that, WoW 2 or whatever, <laughs> with a new leveling experience that really focuses on the ideas that they built up in Classic, where leveling and this tier progression, key unlock, gear farming for resistances idea of Classic with some big tiered raids where they start doing expansions again, but instead of designing in a horizontal way, they go or vertical. sorry, a vertical way, they design in a horizontal way where every expansion is not increasing the level cap, but instead increasing what type of gear you may need to do the next raid, right? That also makes every piece of every content before it useful as well right where everybody's kind of doing all these things and they essentially just do wow 2.0 with a 1 to 60 leveling experience where essentially all of the content going forward is always going to be useful would be the way that I would I would want I feel like that's would solve so many issues I think the game's flawed guys Period. As it is, yeah, yeah. I mean, as is, I feel like I feel like there are a lot of theories that we can leverage against this current model, but I think we also have to uh, take into account that many of the features of this game that we fell in love with and are looking for now simply aren't aren't something that they are willing to nurture within the market. I don't know. Well, know? I I don't know if I fully agree with that. I, I don't know if Anthony was going to say that as well, but I still do not think after Oop. doing this raid and now doing a few of the heroic bosses and things like that, raiding on two characters, mm -hmm. I still think I still stand by my opinion that I said when we first started talking about this, and we're like, let's try the new expansion again. Mm -hmm. There is not another experience on the market that does rating, healing, tanking, DPS, th this experience, especially healing, like wow. There is simply not another one on the market. And if you want that experience, if you like that experience in gaming, it simply does not exist elsewhere. It's fair. On top of that, I think that on, it's also just this. I think World of Warcraft is just a hearthstone. It's like a home. It's like during the disaster, a thing that we listen to book wise and movie wise that we try to download was Harry Potter. It's a, it's a thing that is just kind of um, comforting. Yes. That you can always go back to. You can and always I agree go back with that to too. It. This mm. is why I said, like, my idea isn't to do something new. And I don't think that's what Blizzard should try to do. I just think they need a reset point into the world that you already love. Yeah. So yeah, you're that right. You can kind of experience a new thing with the same idea. Yeah. I think the weird thing is we're <clears> playing <throat> the game, we're having fun, 
were comforted mm -hmm. and eventually playing the aspects of the game that we like mm -hmm. we hit a wall and now it's like okay what are my options well, well my only real option is to play an alt basically mm -hmm. because my current guys is stuck and it's really hard to do what i was doing further so like the whole do the other thing yeah the whole progression from lfr to normal to heroic to mythic is not um there's just not natural. a pipeline there there's not a natural it's progression not a natural there yeah. you, you don't have some way of like what we were talking about earlier oh you can go and get a certificate that says i have mastered these mechanics you can trust me put me in your group you know <laughs> I promise. L lf heroic lf mythic like already vetted if they if they did that you you the wall is gone you don't hit a wall you just keep going as long as you want we i think it also to. change changes so much too like i would love like we're, unfortunately we're one person short of being able to like just do chill mythics too because like yeah. mythic plus is really fun in my opinion if you don't really care uh, about it you know yeah you if you're just you like doing it to have fun yeah. if you don't care about winning or losing and you're just like hey let's try to do mythic plus and see how far we get this week it's cute and yeah, yeah it's just really fun the problem <laughs> is if you join a group that's already a mythic plus every mistake is somebody yeah. raging and being like a total jerk eric and i joined I one and i got so. reported within two minutes reported yes they reported yeah. me for trolling and i was like Tr reported for trolling. um what <laughs> yeah we we hadn't even done anything we had done one pull yeah and that was it and i died and i was like well that was interesting what happened there <laughs> uh, yeah w wild cut uh, poopy caca uh, essentially because they didn't uh interrupt stuff lo and behold so yeah, hilarious. I'm not a fan of that. Okay. So, so it's like it's like it's like things like that that are just very very interesting. It's like a lot of people take that game overly seriously, and it's like if you why? have a group that you here's <laughs> it's the like thing. Why? <laughs> I would say if you have a guild or a group that you're friends with that is chill and relaxed, then all of the content in WoW is available to you, and you're pretty much in like the best times of wow essentially and if you have a group of five you can do 99 percent of the stuff in wow because mythic plus essentially allows you to get the highest eye level in the game and which you also allows you, you yeah. yeah 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 it's like when you have 645 eye level because you did mythic plus 10 you know and you do that a few weeks in a row, you, you can, can see even, anything. You, you can, can see kind world. of get into mythic groups just as a pug at that point, you know? Yeah. So it's like, you can try all the different content. And it's like, it just depends on whether you have the right amount of people, how much content is done. But as a solo player, you, you do have of, some superficial walls. I, well, I have a question. Like, I just, you made me realize it's weird that when you're going and doing world quests, mm -hmm. they cap you off at a certain thing. Now I understand it's it's easy, it's simple, right? Uh huh. But what about the idea that the more you train, the stronger you get? And they're doing the more you train, no, you don't get stronger. Just stop training. Don't do it anymore. Just it's useless. It's pointless. If your only is what goal is saying. eye level, yes. Well, I'm saying why, like game design wise why cap the people at a thing doing world doing world quests at a, at a certain eye level yeah. well i so my my thinking on it isn't even that it's that i honestly hate the uh, one of the things that i was going to bring up is that i honestly hate the gear upgrade system for example um I, I just don't think it's a worthwhile thing. Experience it doesn't it doesn't I give think, you a good feeling. I it think just keeps you in the game. The only thing good about it is for alt to holics. And that's because 
uh, if you have an alt that has that item that's higher level, well, it's like basically free. I don't think so. Uh, it helps you level up all of your alts together. Okay, that's that's that, but that's like there the only good. But I think thing even then, if you have if you're an altaholic and you get your delves up, you immediately get 600 eye level gear mm -hmm. once you have your delve journey at like. 15 or whatever it is true so like you're immediately at 600 with all of your alts once you do enough delves delves are very easy so it's like not not bad you're gonna do two a week anyways if you only do your minimum two a week for a 616 then you're looking at i think 10 weeks and you have unlocked your 600 eye level piece for every if you're lucky character. every single time no 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 that's just like if you do two delves a week even oh, if you yeah, fail yeah, yeah. them, yeah, yeah. you get the journey experience and yeah. you get the um, your six sixteen eye level piece. Like that's it. You don't even have to successfully do that. You I can, did not know that. Yeah. You wow. only have to successfully do it if you want the bountiful chest. Got you. Um, you know what would be so interesting What's if that? they stopped showing everyone each other's eye level. Well, I was going to say one of the things that uh, so I level, I really don't have a problem with under the exception that right now I level is conflated. It doesn't really mean that much like no. it used to because you can because, do anything because you can, anything because you can upgrade yeah. because you can upgrade bad gear into gear that looks like good gear. Mm -hmm. And so if you have 600 eye level, it can look like you're oh, you've done the normal raid. But in but actuality, all, you never what, have to have done the normal. Or is it veteran? No, not veteran. Yeah, it's all just veteran Adventure seven or something like that. Back in the day, when you before they had gear upgrading, before Cataclysm and its nightmarish Titan forging nonsense. Mm, actually, back when, something. back when your gear actually meant what it meant, when you had a piece of gear and people could look at your character model. Now I'm not saying that we take away. Uh, transmog. wardrobes and transmogs because I know I know people entire, love it, yeah, and that's cool. But there was something special about being able to look at the character model and know how experienced they are. Yeah, and that's gone. That is entirely gone. Yeah, transmogs and, killed that. And so I, in my opinion, gear upgrades and getting. So Anthony, you said, hey, why don't we just unlock the cap? Getting stronger. Or doing more world quests should just get you more gear. I think the problem in everybody's head and the problem with the current WoW design is that gear eye level is your benchmark for what you're able to do in the game. And it's the only thing that you unlock that gets you more progression in the game. Doing more world quests should unlock you more world quest things. Mm. Eye level should simply unlock your ability to tackle Harder well, you know what it is. You know, you know why. You know why the design is flawed. Yeah, it's because greed. They, it's time investment. They want they you want, to spend more time in the game. You can never finish. Yeah. Yes. The end and game is yes. And that's that wall. And that's that wall for me. I'm like, dude, it's, it's just ones and zeros. It just and it keeps going. And upgrading allows you to do that. Back in when you were farming Black Temple and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you had a palpable end game. Yeah. Literally, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. I want that that sword that that person's wearing. And when I have it, I will I will, I have will be done. done. I will be done. I will with be that. done with that. Yeah. Right? This is, there was yeah. a sense of completion. Now there technically is a perfect item for every slot, but it's so much more obscured than it was back in the day. You have to look up spreadsheets. You have to sim craft. You have to figure out what it is. All these things. Back in the day, it was like fucking. I need Thunder Fury. Mm -hmm. Like, and then when you got Thunder Fury, you were you would sit inside of Orgrimmar or, or, or Stormwind and sit on top of the mailbox in front of the auction house and be like, "Eat Check it." This shit out. <laughs> yeah, this is why like, I think, like Eric, I think you've said this a lot. You just need somebody. Or a group of people with a ton of money that just want to make a good game yeah. without the like, oh, we need to make sure that we have player retention and stuff like that. It's like, no, do just what game. Nat wants in yeah. the story. I my paladin 
has reached the end. Awesome. Yeah. That was great. And if you do it right, well, maybe now that person wants to do it with another character completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another character that may have come. So. <sighs> Mm. I am. Not, and again, I, I stand by my 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 saying, I think it is, I want a better game. But at the same time, the current WoW is amazing. It's I still really it's the, fun. It's the mm. best that it's been in a long time. Mm. It's not perfect. It's got flaws. It's really good. Yeah. Unfortunate. Yeah. Gentlemen, that's yes. the time for me, unfortunately. That's the time. Because I go. do have to go into work tomorrow after yes. road tripping today and getting two hours of sleep last night. Yes. I think I did pretty good today. Oh. Yeah. Kind of, maybe. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway. Hey, we're back on it. We're back on. Yeah. The podcast is back. Thank yeah. you, everybody, for watching. Uh, the 150 plus new viewers that we've had over the past two weeks has been insane. What? Uh, Drink up, y'all. Keep, keep subscribing. Hit the subscribe. What? Everything's in the duplicate do. All duplicate things are awesome. do. I love it. Yeah. Yes. Love it. Okay. Bye. Have a good week. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Bye.